we talked about how the displacement of an elastic body can be defined by a set of continuous functions u of x, y, which is the displacement along the x-axis, and then v of x, y, which is the displacement along the y-axis, right, or the y-direction. All right, so from these displacement functions, we said that we can determine the normal and the shear strains. So we defined that the normal strain was equal to the de partial derivative of u of x, y with respect to x. The normal strain in the y direction was equal to the partial derivative of v of x, y with respect to dy. And the shear strain was equal to the partial derivative of, of dv, dx, plus the derivative of uh, partial derivative of u of x, y with respect to y, right? So using these definitions, um, we can just do a quick example problem. We can solve for the epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy uh, at the point A um, for the element shown below. All right. So let's just write down our definitions real quick. We know that epsilon x is equal to du with respect to x. All right. So if we look at point A, all right, that would be equal to the change in the displacement in U with respect to the change in X, All right? So the approximate, that you're gonna be equal to that for this problem, okay? So what we're doing here is we're st we started with, I guess, A, B, C, D, and we went to, uh, let's call it A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime, okay? All right, so using the coordinates of the two systems, we should be able to calculate our uh, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. So, so our change in U, all right, along the x-axis is gonna be equal to the change at point B minus the change at point A divided by the length from A to B, all right? So if we plug that all in, the change at point B is equal to a positive 1.6 millimeters, all right? The change in point A was equal to a positive 0 0.6 millimeters, all right, and then the total length from point A to point B was equal to 800 millimeters. So if we do that, um, what we'll end up getting is we'll get 1250 times 10 to the minus six millimeters per millimeter. So we can repeat the process for epsilon y. We have the partial derivative of v with respect to y is going to be approximately equal to the change in y over the change in, um, sorry, the change in v over the change in y, right, which in this case is going to be equal to v of point d minus v of point a divided by the length from point a to point b. So if you look, uh, put in our terms, the change in the displacement from point D to point D prime was equal to minus 1.2 millimeters. All right, the point A did not have any displacement at all, so it'd be equal to zero millimeters. And then our, the length from point A to point D is equal to 600 millimeters. All right, so if we, uh, evaluate all that out. Here, what we'll end up getting is we'll get minus 2,000 times 10 to the minus 6 millimeters per millimeter. Okay. All right. And then the last thing we're going to use here is we're going to have um, evaluate gamma xy. 
which we know is equal to du uh, dy plus dv dx. So in this case, it's going to be approximately equal to um, uh, this would be equal to the change in u over the change in y plus the change in v over the change in x. So what it is going to end up being equal to is that it's going to be equal to the change in the displacement of point D and, and the x direction minus the change in the displacement in point A. So the x direction divided by the length of A to D plus the change in uh, the vertical displacement of point B minus the change in the vertical displacement of point A divided by uh, the uh, element uh, or the length uh, AB. All right, so if we plug in all those terms, U of D um, didn't move at all in the X direction, so it would be equal to zero millimeters. U of A moved a positive 0 0.6, so we would subtract 0 0.6 millimeters and then the length from point A to point D was equal to 0 0.6 or was equal to 600 millimeters. All right and then for B it moved up two millimeters. All right point A did not move at all and then the change from point A to point B was e or um, sorry from uh, from point A to point B was equal to uh, 800 millimeters. So if we add those two together, what we should end up getting is we get uh, 1500 times 10 to the minus 6 millimeters per millimeter, which is the same thing as 1500 times 10 to the minus 6 radians. So if you're given a problem like this where you're given the initial state and the final state and you're given the components and you're asked to solve for the strain at a given point, you can use the definitions of strain um, and you can define and you can use the approximate form of these equations to get the uh, strain to determine the strains. Um, for each of these, uh, determine the normal strains, epsilon x, epsilon y, and determine the, uh, the shear strains, gamma x, y.